Hello everyone, this is Teal here. Welcome to another art product review. Today I'm going to review the water brushes that I have. Okay, let's take a look at them one by one. Oh, this one we have is the Derwent water brush. They come in three sizes, small, medium and large. Uh, by the size, I mean the size of the bristles. So this one is the large one. Now the Zewen water brush has a um, rather strange cap. Uh, this cap clicks on very nicely, but the strange part is the the edge of the cap, the angular edges. So when you put it on the table, it doesn't roll off. And I think it's a very good feature. Okay, these three are the Pentel water brushes. They also come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. You can identify them by the bulky body. Let's take a closer look at the bristles, the different sizes. Now, most of these water brushes uh, use synthetic bristles. Uh, many of these synthetic bristles are actually transparent, but when you use it with watercolor, it would discolor the bristles. Okay, next up we have the Yasutomo Niji water brushes. They also come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. Now, in addition to that, they also have a flat brush that is quite broad and that is good for uh, creating big washes. So you can identify these Niji water brushes by their cap. Uh, this cap is actually quite useless because they they glue the clip to the cap body. I don't know why they do that. So you cannot use this as a normal pen cap. Strange. This is the Niji flat brush. Uh, it's good for big washers as mentioned just now. Uh, oops, I just dropped my cap on the floor. Now the cap doesn't click very tightly to the back of this brush. So be careful of losing your caps when using the brushes. Usually I put the caps either on the back of the brush or in my pocket. These two are the Sakura water brushes. Now the one on the left only has four, has a very small uh, water capacity, which makes it quite useless actually. And the one on the right has a much bigger water capacity. So this one will be more useful, especially when you are painting inside a sketchbook that's about A5 size and above, I'll use a big water brush. This one is my favorite, the Holbein water brush. This one comes in two sizes. Uh, the bristles is in medium and large. The Holbein water brush is the largest water brush that I have. And compared to other water brushes, the bristles is a bit different. It's synthetic as well, but the bristles are, is white in color instead of transparent. They get worn off very quickly so I usually bring two outdoors when I'm drawing. Uh, one is the main brush as one as the backup. I like the water capacity for this. This one can hold quite a lot of water as well. So this is one of my favorite water brushes. Even though the construction for the water brushes may look simple but there are some little details that make a water brush perform better and some water brush doesn't perform that as that good as well so let's take a look at these two ones are uh, the derwin and the pentel water brush to let you see what i'm talking about when looking for water brushes i will look for those with breather holes uh, what is a breather hole uh, there's this small hole here that uh, on this part that holds the bristle together. I'm not sure if you can see it very well. Let me point it to you. Yeah, this tiny hole here. So what does the breather hole do? Um, when you press the... Uh, let me switch the brush to can see it, the hole clearly. Yeah, it's there. So the thing is, when you press the body of the brush, the water will come out as well as the pigment. But when you release the body, the air will go into the brush. Now the air goes into the brush through the breather holes. Now for this Derwin one without the breather hole, the air will go in from the bristles 
hole itself so when it goes back in it will also pull the pigment back in and that will dirty the water inside the body so for water brushes without the holes you can expect the pigment to flow back into the water into the water capacity and just dirty the water and so the Derwin does not have the water hose, so I'm not going to look at that. These are the three Pentel water brushes. Uh, one of this, the large one actually has the breather hose. The, the other two does not have them, which is quite weird. The Niji. Also, some has the breather hose and some doesn't. The large one has it, the small and medium does not. Then we have the Niji flat brush. This one doesn't have the holes as well, but there are no alternatives. And these two are the Sakura water brushes. They don't have the holes as well. I don't use them that often because of that. So now we are left with four water brushes. Now on the right, the whole bin is my favorite. My next two favorite would be the Pentel and the Niji water brushes. And the flat brush, I don't use it that often. This is a new brush actually. Okay, let's take a look at how these four brushes perform with watercolor. That's my watercolor palette box, a Winston Newton heavy weight box. Let's try the whole bin first. I'll press a little bit of water and then mix it with the pigment. Usually I do not use so much water, I just use uh, just the right amount unless I'm painting a big wash. In that case, then I will pre-mix the mixture with lots of water. So I'm just going to write a few letters strokes with this whole bin water brush. Now the bristles for this is quite thick, so you are going to get very thick strokes. Even for the medium sized one, it's also very thick. I like the big one because I like to draw uh, big sometimes. So that's Hobin. Now you can use the now oh, the big brush is very good for flat washers as well if you don't want to just buy a separate uh, flat wash brush. Okay let's take a look at the next water brush the Niji water brush. This one has a slightly smaller bristles. Again, you press and the water will come out. Let me mix a bit of more red. And you can see that the strokes are slightly thinner than the whole veins one. This is the Yasumoto Niji. Comes in three sizes as mentioned just now. This is a slightly shorter one than the whole bin, so you can put it inside. I usually put it inside my pencil case and it fits quite well. Let me do a wash for this. Now as you can do a flat wash or you can do a gradated wash when you press and press to release the water and use it at the same time. Now it's very challenging to get a gradated wash uh, because it's not easy to control how much water is coming out. You are not very, it's very difficult to gauge the precise amount of water that is coming out. Okay, now we are on to the Pentel water brush. Let me use some Taylor Blue. Pentel water brush is also very capable of thin strokes. Let me do some thin lines for you to see. Okay, let's try some flat wash. Now you see I press a bit too much water and the water has interacted with the pigment so the wash is a bit uneven. You can see the water flowing down, that's because the paper is a bit tilted. Let me tilt it a bit more upright. So you can see the water flowing down as I press. 
and it's quite challenging to get a totally flat wash with a water brush as I mentioned just now I mean for sketchbook purposes uh, if you're using it with a sketchbook mm, probably it doesn't really matter that much okay let's try the Niji flat brush let me mix a bit of the green color I think that's Taylo green this one gives out a lot of water as well you can see that the brush strokes are very broad and maybe some can use it for some calligraphy effects as well now this brush is best used to create flat washes I do not actually use this brush to for flat washes that often I use the whole bean one because I mean with enough practice you can actually use a round brush for flat washes as well but this brush is good for some special effects also because it has a very broad stroke so you can get really thin strokes if you use it on the edge so in this case you can use it to create effects like maybe grass uh, it's very convenient okay let's take a look at what we have done here water brushes are very convenient for to use outdoors but the inconvenient part uh, comes when you are trying to mix colors and you, and you want to switch colors how do you clean the brush now for me i clean the brush using a piece of tissue so i just press to let the water drip out a bit and then wipe it with the tissue so you may have to do it a few times to make it clean just now I was using a uh, blue color so now I've cleaned it and now I'm going to use red so press a bit and let the pigment flow out and wipe it and now I use green now usually I will bring about three brushes of the same sizes out if I don't want to do the cleaning that often and because Sometimes when you clean it too much, the colors will become dirty and becomes very difficult to clean. Or if I run out of tissue, then I can have extra brushes to fall back to. Okay, let's take a look at how the water brush compared to a normal uh, brush. This one is a sable brush. Let's look at the blue that I used just now. You can see that this wash is a bit uneven. Right at the top, the is darker, then it becomes lighter. Then there's this part which is a bit uneven, and then there are the backgrounds at the bottom because I used too much water. Water is very difficult to control now with a normal brush, uh, even with a normal synthetic or a normal sable brush. You can you can know that the how much water is coming out so you don't control the water you just let the water flow naturally and with that you will be able to create a very flat wash very easily almost effortlessly effortlessly so this is i'll use a normal brush when i want to create uh, flat washes but for outdoor use i would go with the portable more portable water brushes okay just a recap these are my four favorite this is on the left is the Pentel this one is the Hobin I try to buy big Bristol brushes because the big Bristols uh, can do whatever the small Bristols can do but the small Bristols cannot do what the big brush can do this one is the Niji uh, be careful when you put the cap back on the water brushes this one has a stray hair uh, which you probably cannot see and this is the flat brush that I don't use often Thank you for watching this comparison review for the water brushes. Now the text review is also available in the YouTube description below. Just click on the link inside there and you also get links to where you can buy these water brushes. Share it with your friends. Thank you.